Have you gotten the chance yet to play with these code generation models? And I don't mean like inside of like VS Code where it like auto completes, but I'm talking about like actually playing with the AI model that does that magic. It's pretty impressive and it's really fun. And I was hoping to just walk through this notebook here, show you off this new model that we just came out this week. It's called the Deep Seek Coder. And it lets you do some of those things. And I think what's really interesting about this specifically, this code generation model, is that it unlocks use cases that allow you to kind of progressively add AI to your applications. If you have a developer tool that you're building, or you work for a company that makes developer tools, I think that this is a nice way to add new use cases, new AI use cases to help your users out. Let's explore this a little bit. So if you haven't seen a Jupyter Notebook before, this is all running Python. So um, because our models have an API endpoint, I can hit it with Python. I can write a worker's AI as well, but I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna uh, generate the, we're gonna run this code up to here. We are going to say kernel restart and run up to this selected cell. I'm gonna give this thing a prompt. And the prompt is just a comment, right? So a Python comment, a function that checks if the given word is a palindrome. And then I'm gonna hit our response. I'm gonna take the account ID and the model name. This is the model name here that I'm using is this deep seek coder. Uh, and my account ID I got from here. So I got my account ID. Uh, there's some instructions if you need to do that. This is available in the docs as a tutorial as well if you wanna download this and explore and think through some things. So basically that's what I did. I got the, the, the inference back and it has a, a thing called response. I pulled that out. I made it pretty so that we can look at this here, but check this out. So I said a function that checks if a given word is a palindrome and it generated the code. So you've seen that, right? You write the comment and then you press tab and boom, your, your code pops out. Here's how you can do that with the actual model code that does that. So it got the lower, it reversed it. This is kind of cool. I think that this is actually one of those, can you do this on the whiteboard interview type things? So I think this is one of those. I would actually, I don't know why we just didn't do return word equal equal reversed word. Maybe this is more clear, but this might be more Pythonic if you will. But yeah, so then it also showed how to test the function. It's pretty cool, right? Just from a comment, it was able to do that. I was really impressed with this model with what, what that could do. Let's go a little bit farther. So the next thing that you could do, like you could imagine, I think one of the, the paradigms that we have is it's like frequently asked questions and we try to find all the errors that are there. What if you just let your user show you the error and then you kind of let the model try to figure it out? might be a little bit more advanced, but check this out. Check out what this can do. So I'm going to use the instruct model, right? So I'm going to give the system message of the user is going to give you code that isn't working. Explain to the user what might be wrong. That's all. That's all I'm going to do. And then we're going to have them submit the code, right? So it says this code welcomes our user. It says, hello world. And then we print out that and that should be hello world, right? Is there anything wrong with that? Do you see anything wrong with that? I put something wrong with that on purpose. There's something wrong with that. So we're going to pass that in. And let's see what it says. There we go. So it says the error in your code that you're trying to use a variable name, which is not defined anywhere in your function. The correct variable to use is first name. Ah, oh, look at that, I used name and it should have been first name. So you should change that to hello name, not hello first name. Here's the corrected code, it gave it to me. And it also gave an example of what would have happened, which is pretty awesome, right? That was pretty magical, right? That it just kind of did that. It kind of ran the code somehow, somewhere. I don't know how that works but I can use it and it's an API call. That's pretty cool, right? That's neat. So you're probably thinking, okay, yeah, sure. Let's get a little bit more hard. How about we write some tests? I made a very silly class, just created this class and I wanna write some unit tests for it. We'll walk through the class after I show you the prompt first. So it says, the user's gonna give you code and would like to have tests written in Python unit test module. So I like to do this a lot with my system messages. I say what the user is going to do and then I put in the, the message afterwards of what the user's gonna do. It's a really nice input output program and you can kind of like experiment in there. So 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 play with this if, if, that's, if you like that. So we have a class user and we're gonna pass in the first name and the last name, but in Python, we're gonna pass in none. By default, it's none. So if it is none, we're gonna set the last name to Mick whatever. So if it came in as Craig, it'd be Craig McCraig, right? And then that's what the full name is going to uh, write out, self first name dot last name. We've got a couple of things in there to test. We want to make sure that if it was not null or if it was none, we, we've got, we got a couple of things that we want to test. So if you haven't seen the Python unit test module, it's a little goofy. It's been around for a while. It uses some strange not Python case. Let's see how it does. So we're going to, again, passing this into the messages. We're going to do system messages and code. Before, right, we went straight with this. We went to do the same sort of thing here. We did the system message and code. And we also did this just pushed a straight prompt in, right? just straight exactly what the user said. But this is a little bit more. We're saying a little bit more specifically, 
we're, we're specifically saying that we want to write this in a unit test module style. So I'm going to run that. And let's see what comes out. All right, so here's a simple unit test case. So it's uh, importing unit test case. It's doing the right inheritance stuff. Yeah, so we got test full name and it's testing that it's Jane McJane. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool that it did John Doe and Jane McJane looking at the code knew what to do. I think that's impressive. I think that's, that's super impressive and uh, makes me want to get more into this, like how is that working? How I put some links here in the in the notebook if you want to go and read about how that's happening as well. Uh, but this is available to you again. API call. Uh, you could imagine just doing that, right? Like maybe you don't. Maybe maybe this is how you you go ahead and make unit tests for yourself, or you put unit tests into your project of like, hey, you want us to build you a unit test for that? I think that's a super nice thing to give developers, right? All right. So next, this one is so cool. I love this. So this is often shortened to FIM. So like fill in the middle of the code completion. So what you do is you, you put these markers in and you give it some code and the code actually, I was surprised. I kind of tried to break it a little bit and I, I left some, some of that in here. Uh, you can put in the beginning mark uh, and you put an end mark and you put in the thing called a hole, like where you want the code to go. So you can imagine that you're editing and you have your cursor waiting there. That's the hole, right? The hole of the code of what you want to do. So contextually, what, and oh, one thing to point out, I want to make sure that this is, uh, these are special characters there. It's not just pipe in that there's, there's some special characters that are around that. It took me a while uh, to catch that. So I'm going, if you just pass this, you just pass this to it and it will go ahead and we'll figure out what the hole is, but that's how this pattern works. I am going to import RE, which is the regular expression library, just kind of giving it a little bit of a hint that that exists. I made a package, JK, LOL, import email service doesn't actually exist, right? It doesn't know anything about that. I, I have a function called send email and I'm passing the email address in the body. And then I have the hole. So the cursor's sitting there. And now we're talking about is valid email and that doesn't exist. So basically what I was hoping would happen was it was gonna do the regular expression that I didn't wanna write, right? I went, is this thing a valid email? I hope that's what's gonna happen from this. And as a user, as you're, you're typing that through, that might be something you do. So again, we get the response back. Let's run that let's see what happens. And it did it. So it wrote is valid email. It, it created that. And like, this is the line that it would have generated. I think that's probably a pretty good regular expression. There's probably better ones. There's about like 5,000 on the internet uh, on GitHub probably alone, but that's, that's pretty great. Okay. I got really thinking like, whoa, this thing seems like it understands code. Can I make it follow JSON schema. Now, it this wasn't even in the docs. This wasn't in the docs and I was just experimenting. And I, I kind of want you to play with this a little bit, like feel that way, feel like you should go and grab this model and play with it. Like what can it do? So <laughs> let, let's see. So if you haven't seen JSON schema, it's pretty noisy. It's a loud thing, but I, you can kind of describe things. So I'm saying this is the first name. This is the user's first name and it's a, of type string. So you kind of just what you want your JSON object to do. You could say what's required and you could say that things are an array and each one of the items is a string. Uh, you can even do integers, right? So uh, a silly, silly thing. I made this user and it's a user for our app. I, I said what it was and I just kind of described what each one of these things was, right? So hoping that what could happen is I could give it a sentence and it can build the object from JSON. Now, if you've played at all with trying to get JSON out of these text models, it is hard. It is very hard. And in fact, some people, I made a little joke here, they bring grandma into the prompt. And there's this thing that you can do where you're like, hey, my grandma's really sick and I really, she really loves JSON. Can you please return JSON? Like people try so hard to get JSON out of here. I want to tell you that this model does a really good job. So right, you can use a model and then use another model, right? You can have multiple models running and you can kind of make a pipeline, right? So pull, you use one model for the conversation and use this other model to do the code, right? So, I was just seeing if this would work and it does, it works. So the user is going to discuss themselves and you should create a JSON object from their description to match the JSON schema below. I made this up, this didn't exist. I just made a tag. I like to put tags around things like that. Begin JSON schema in JSON schema and you pass in that schema that we built here, right? So return JSON only, do not explain or provide use examples. I don't want it. I don't give it to me. <laughs> and then again, just passing in the system prompt, a single API call. You can do this from wherever. 
and now I'm going to run this. And I, oh, I forgot to say, so I'm Craig. I'm a developer educator at Cloudflare. My email is this. I am very interested in AI. I've got two kids. I love tacos, burritos, and all things Cloudflare. And look at that. Look at that. It pulled two kids out. It got my first name and my last name. It got my interests, which are in order. I like AI, Cloudflare, tacos, and burritos. Those are very much my interests. <laughs> it pulled it out. It did it in the right format. Now, I think, and I would like you to try, you could probably do the reverse. If you didn't feel like you wanted to write this schema, I think you could probably write, you could write JSON and say, can you write the JSON schema for me? I didn't put that example here. That's up to you. That's up to you because you can download this. This is in the notes, in, in, the, in the docs. You come to the docs and you can go and you can download this notebook and you can just also check it out. And you can, in here, you can also copy and paste. I don't know if that's clear. You can come in here, you can just copy and paste and now you've got that. Right, so, so all you're gonna need to do is have your account ID and your API token, and you should be ready to go. There's also some more over here, there's more tutorials if you're interested in learning about these models that we have out there. Keep me posted on what sort of ideas you do with this text generation. I am so incredibly excited to see what you do with this. Keep me posted, see you soon.